This is a tough one. My brother, with whom I was very, very close, died suddenly just a few days ago. I was literally getting ready to go out of town to accept an award. I don't know. Let me do that again. My older brother, Kirk, died suddenly and unexpectedly just a few days ago. He and I were very, very close. I have two brothers. My younger brother died almost 25 years ago. He was diabetic. And both my parents died several years ago. So now it's just me. It is a very, very strange feeling, almost as if someone has taken my feet out from under me. Everybody loved Kirk. Everybody loved him. He um, had such a great personality. When my friends would come over to visit me, you know, in those days, no cell phones. So when you go over somebody's house, think about it. It's a crapshoot as to whether or not they're home. So my friends would come over to visit me, and if I wasn't there, they'd say, well, let me come on in and I'll hang out with you, Kirk. But when Kirk's friends came over to visit Kirk and he wasn't home, they said, well, tell him I was here, and they wouldn't leave. That's how gracious my brother was. Everybody liked him. He was a Navy vet, a Vietnam-era vet, and he enlisted at a time when it was not particularly a popular thing to do. <laughs> he loved him some Elvis Presley. And when we were little, he dragged my little brother and me to all of Elvis Presley's movies, including the bad ones. And if you saw all of Elvis Presley's movies, you know there were a lot of bad ones. Kirk would take Dennis and me down to Hollywood from time to time so we could see the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I couldn't have cared less. My little brother couldn't have cared less. But Kirk was a major movie fanatic, and he loved movies and movie stars and knew all the gossip. He even knew about Fatty Arbuckle, some comedian who got into trouble years ago. So fast forward several years later, I get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and of course, I invite my brother to the ceremony. And as I'm being celebrated, my brother leans over to me and says, can you believe this? And you don't even like movies. <laughs> my brother was bigger, faster, stronger, and for some reason, we were on opposing teams in Little League. I was on the Cubs, he was on the Dodgers. Well, we were going to play each other for the first time, and I was nervous and scared because I could not hit my brother in the backyard. I could not hit him in the yard when we played. He was too fast, too big, too strong. So the night before the game, Kirk and I go up to my dad, and we told my dad how scared I was, and I asked my dad whether or not it would be appropriate for Kirk to ease up on me. And my dad looked at both of us and said, Kirk, your job is to throw that ball by your brother and Larry, your job is to try the, your best to rip the cover off that ball and let's see what happens. Well, we played each other two times. The first time we won 13 to six. Second time we won 12 to five. I got two doubles, two triples, three singles in those two games. First time and the only time I ever hit Kirk. To this day, I'm not sure whether or not he eased up. Something I didn't appreciate until I got a lot older as I mentioned, Kirk was bigger, faster, stronger, but unlike other guys I knew who had older brothers, Kirk never beat us up. He never pushed Dennis and me around, even though he could. It was common for older brothers to beat up little brothers. Isn't that kind of a rite of passage? Kirk never did that. And one time I asked him why, and Kirk later on said, well, I thought a home should be a place of peace, not a place of turmoil. Who says that? Now, because Kirk never bullied us, I thought of Kirk as soft. There was a neighborhood tough guy who one time came up to our house and he and Kirk were horse playing and for some reason uh, a button popped off the tough guy's shirt. Instead of just relaxing after Kirk said, look, my mother can fix it. She's a sewer. She can fix anything. The tough guy had an attitude and hit Kirk. And I just knew Kirk was going to get destroyed. Kirk kicked the crap out of that guy. It was like John effing Wayne. It was amazing. But he was somebody, Kirk, who was slow to anger, but when you angered him, get out of the way, <laughs> as a neighborhood tough guy learned. And when I told my mother what happened, my mom just shrugged her shoulders and said, well, he picked on the wrong guy, didn't he? <laughs> he sure did. I was honored to throw out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium. When I told my friends I got this honor, everybody said, oh my God, great, great, great. I told Kirk, and Kirk said, two things. Make sure you throw it from the mound, and don't bounce it. You'll embarrass the family. <laughs> I didn't bounce it. <laughs> when my brother died, I contacted Joseph, a Marine vet and also an LAPD cop. He helped to make the military arrangement for the funeral. He sent me the following letter. Joseph wrote, quote, 
Kirk enlisted when enlisting was not popular. Your brother was a petty officer third class, E4, the equivalent rank of a corporal non-commissioned officer in the Marine Corps. That's the rank I achieved, but he did it in a shorter period of time. It's the first enlisted rank of command and control of others. To achieve this rank in the Navy, he had to be a leader. He also received a National Defense Service Medal." End of quote. <laughs> oh, about the Service Medal? Kirk never mentioned it. This is the first I knew about it. Now, my brother had four children, two girls, two boys. He loved, loved, loved his children. Now, Kirk had a favorite watering hole. It was called the Shark Bar. And when he died, I asked his wife where it was. So I went, walked up to some guys who looked like regulars, and sure enough, they knew my brother, and within a few minutes, 20 or 30 people had gathered around, all expressing their condolences, all telling me what a great guy he was, how Kirk would bring presents for people, brought presents for the barmaid, brought presents for the wait staff, that he was just a generous, kind, caring soul without an enemy. Kirk loved him some Raiders. It didn't matter whether they were in Oakland or in LA or back to Oakland or in Las Vegas. He loved him some Raiders. He liked the idea that they were renegades. Speaking of which, Kirk was one of the first guys in the neighborhood to embrace then Cassius Clay. My father, my mother thought he was a braggart, that he was gonna be destroyed by the then heavyweight champion, Sonny Liston. Kirk predicted that Clay was gonna win and win big. Clay did and Kirk crowed for years. A few years before my dad died, I went to visit my parents. My mother informed me that dad was in the garage throwing out old stuff. My father had a tendency to throw out stuff that we wanted to keep, so I ran out there and I caught him with an envelope in his hand he was about ready to throw away. I said, Dad, what is this? He said, oh, something I wrote a long time ago. I said, what is it? He said, it was a letter I wrote to Kirk. A letter you wrote to Kirk? He said, yeah, Kirk was two years old. He said, I always had a premonition I was going to die at the age of 36. So I wrote this letter to Kirk so he would have advice and guidance on how to live a good life in my absence. Here's what the letter said. Kirk, my son, you are now starting out in life, a life that mother and I cannot live for you. So as you journey through life, remember it's yours. So make it a good one. Always try to cheer up the other fellow. Learn to think straight. Analyze things. Be sure you have all the facts before concluding and always spend less than you earn. Make friends, work hard, and play hard. Most important of all, remember this, the best of friends wear out if you use them. This may sound silly, son, but no matter where you are on the 29th of September, Kirk's birthday, see that mother gets a little gift, if possible, along with the big kiss and a broad smile. When you are out on your own, listen and take advice, but do your own thinking and concluding. Set up a reasonable goal, then be determined to reach it. You can and will. It's up to you, son. Your father, Randolph Elder. My brother was a regular feature on my radio show. He appeared every Friday for an hour. Where we talked about politics and sports. We did contests. People loved my brother. He's a Democrat, but a reasonable Democrat. He didn't demean or put down people who felt differently. When he died, I got a note from one of his many fans. And he said, I heard about your brother's passing. Let me tell you something, Larry. If I had a brother, he would have looked like Kirk. Kirk died 16 days before his 70th birthday. He and his wife had planned on a trip to Hawaii. So Kirk Randolph Elder, rest in peace. I love you. And this has been Larry Elder for The Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. I'll see you next time.